I like your optimism, George. No blues is good news, right? Oh, what a card he must have been. All right. Hey, neighbor. Taking a trip down to Rhode Island. Send this one out to my friend Liam and his wife Robin, who now reside in Texas. I like to give them shout outs. They don't have a channel, but they're loyal viewers. And my friend Trevor over at Flat Round and Spun. I think I mentioned this last week. He sent me this four pack of these beer salts. Killer. Really good. This is my favorite. Uh, it's the lemon lime. Let's get this happening. The owls are watching. And the butler's over here too today. Excited to join the party. So you just. Little dash, dash, dash. Mm, mm, mm. So, here, have a Gansett. Right on. All right, that's going to do it for George. No blues is good news, right? So, on a Friday, cheers. So, I don't know, we got a couple things going on today. Like we do. How about this shirt? So, who does this remind you of? Hello, everybody. I'm Steve. This is all the world's a stage. There's Steve up there. You can see he's up by the Guinness clock. His logo, all the world's a stage. This shirt arrived yesterday. It's now joined the MGK Summer 2024 collection officially. It's now the official collection. Spring's underway, so I'm going to launch the collection now. So here it is, beginning with this shirt. Steve also sent me... Where the heck are they? Oh, here they are over here. Yeah, so Steve's been... Helping me with my Canadian content. Leave it to the man from Chicago, man. To, uh, he hooked me up with a whole bunch of tragically hip stuff that I didn't have. Because yeah, I'm originally from Canada, in case you didn't know that already. Though I do reside in Boston. So anyway, double shot of Blue Rodeo here, right? Taking a trip to the casino with Gambler812. Anthony, I'll get to him in a minute. And here's Blue Rodeo again here. The name on this one, uh, Small Miracles. I do know Casino. I don't know this later one, but I'm going to know him soon. I've already spun this one last night. The first time in a long, long time. And then I saw Blue Rodeo a couple times way back when they were a new band in the mid 80s. Yeah, the, the blurry university years. I, I'm really good at remembering concerts, but I don't remember a lot of what I learned. Cheers. <laughs> what are you gonna do, right? So anyway, I thought I'd give a couple of shout outs. That's what I'm gonna do. So, uh, Jack over at the My Vinyl Martini, he, he's been, he does always really diligent about giving shout outs. And even when I had, I don't know, 150 subscribers or something, I, that's a big deal. And you, you see some new channel that just put up a new video. Well, geez, give him a shout out, man. So what do we got here? This guy right here. So this is uh, Vinyl Sean and he is at 28 subscribers. So come on, just a couple to get him to 30 here. Let's go. And, uh, yeah, so I think Sean's only done three or four videos, and um, I've watched two of them. This was a cool uh, 80s one that he did, kind of an 80s um, vinyl tag, if you will. Yeah, it is. Like you said right here, it's an 80s tag, and he's holding up that Simple Minds album. You know what? Well, I'm near the S's here. Yes. So I have this too, Sean, vinyl. Vinyl Sean. So yeah, get over there and check out his channel. All right. Please do and tell, tell him MGK Boston sent you. And yeah, Sean, we're both live in the city of light here with Simple Minds. Great double live album, too, if you don't know that one, people. Here's another guy, this guy, Craig. He's somewhere in the States, I'm not sure. I've only just watched this one video of Craig's. Very dry sense of humor. Um, pretty funny dude. He calls his channel The Spirit of Vinyl. And there's his cool little logo, if you can see that down in the corner, Spirit of Vinyl. So here he is right here. So in this video alone, talk, I'm a man of variety, as if, in case you haven't, can't tell, watching all my videos. Three years this month since I started making videos. Can you believe it? So anyway, in this one, you talk about variety. This guy goes from corrosion to conformity to Adam Ant. That's a serious, like a transatlantic flight, man. We're talking, that's a big distance, big musical jump there. So that's cool. Knowing that, but if you like variety, go over and check out Craig's channel. Again, the spirit of vinyl, and tell him I sent you over there. Yeah, cool dude. I'll be watching more videos from you, Craig. All right, and then next, yes. So last Friday, um, I was off for the day. Uh, our daughter Caroline is home, was home from college for her uh, spring break week. And so uh, she's like, hey, I'm just adjusting my high-end camera here. Um, let's do some thrifting. So we went to the Savers. Don't normally uh, 
go to Savers anymore. I used to go with her when she was younger. And when I started buying records again, uh, I'd go in there and it would just be junk all the time, like really crap. And so I, I went, we went in there last Friday and man, I didn't, it wasn't a huge quantity, but it is quality, quality to me anyway. So yeah, let's start with this. It's a mix of CDs and records. So you've been warned any vinyl purists out there, just chill out and watch, watch some of these CDs for a minute and cool your jets. <laughs> and it's Nina Simone, really good collection, uh, 14 tracks on this. Uh, I watched the documentary about Nina Simone. For some reason, she just flew under my radar all these years, and I'm a big jazz hound, uh, especially I like a lot of jazz vocal. And um, saw this documentary, I'm like, I'm, I'm going to look for some of her stuff. Well, I've been to uh, two record shows since Christmas, never see it. So I'm going this Sunday to Seekonk, Mass. So any of you people in the local Boston area, that show is, I believe, from uh, 10 to 4 at the Ramada Inn. Uh, yeah, so anyway, uh, Seekonk, Mass. This Ramada Inn, by the way, I went to this record show a year ago there, and when I, when I rolled up there, I was seriously looking for crime scene tape. This place should have had on the on the sign, hourly rates, what a dive. But anyway, they have a good record show, so I'll be down there. I'm not sleeping over. So anyway, uh, what do we got on this? This is all covers. Really nice gatefold sleeve on the inside. Beautiful book here, and story about each track and who wrote it. So there's a couple of Bob Dylan numbers on here that are really great. Um, just like Tom Thumb's Blues. Here's my thumb, Tom Thumb. So Grateful Dead, of course, always did a version of that. Phil Lash would butcher it with his terrible singing, but it always seemed to work. And um, she she just does a really great version of it here too. And really turns it into almost a story. Like some Dylan songs are a story. Well, a lot of them are stories, but she really makes it her own. You'd think she wrote it herself. And that's what makes a really good cover. And she's just a beautiful singer. Um, one more I'd like to mention on here. Yeah, Lilac Wine. It's been covered by a few people, including this guy, Jeff Buckley, who's now deceased, sadly. And this is from Grace. I think this might have been his debut back in 1994. And you can see here, uh, track four, Lilac Wine right there. So there she does a good version, like I said. And what's there's another one here, yet another one on here. Yes, track 10 in the dark and that was done by another favorite jazz vocal of mine um anthony at gambler 812 i know you like a lot of the loungy jazz vocal if you see nancy wilson when you're out hunting you know at savers uh i didn't get any of these at savers but uh if you're fortunate enough to find any anything on capital all through the 60s or stuff it's stellar it's great female frank sinatra just a beautiful voice rca was making money hand over fist with those two all right, so what do we got? Um, yeah, got a little more jazz here. Shout out to Gary over at Physical Format. Great trumpeter, the late great art farmer quartet uh, singing softly of the blues. And that's that's the title track too, if you wanna look a great one up on this one. And one for Majid, that's a cool one too, spelled M-A-J-I-D. There's the track listings right there. Really nice, a hard bop jazz. I mean, just, just really throw this on and chill. Really good. Um, Art Farmer Quartet. Yeah, so I was able to just clean these up. That cool Atlantic logo right there. And man, I, these were all two bucks. I mean, yeah, $2 even. And uh, couldn't, couldn't have done better. Thrilled with it. Uh, yeah, so we're getting a little more variety here. So the man I introduced the show with today, the late great George Jones, the possum himself. This is a wonderful collection. It's a double CD set again. This one, they're all, like I said, two bucks. And so um, this is called uh, The Great Lost Hits. Well, they're not really lost. I mean, they were um, a lot of these were charted hits, but uh, there are some different stuff on here that, that you, don't, you don't hear often. Um, things have gone to pieces, though. That, that was a huge, huge, huge hit. It was huge. If Not For You is a great ballad. Uh, Where Grass Won't Grow. Uh, yeah, 433. This whole thing is great. Things things have gone to pieces. It's just a if you <laughs> if you ever heard a drinking song, it's sad and it's a honky tonker. Right out. So yeah, what's on the inside? Yeah, it's one of these time life things. So it's really well done, well put together, and you get a nice book with it. There's George and Tammy right there. So that that they have a big, like almost life size reprint of that hanging in the Country Music Hall of Fame. Uh, Oh, we got here.
in case you've been living under a rock, it's this place. Well, this is a brochure for Studio B at the Country Music Hall of Fame. But yeah, of course, George is in it. You know, it's like the best quarterback in the NFL in music. Like, yeah, the best male country vocalist of all time. I'm going to say it. Really great. Arguably, his ex wife, too, Tammy, uh, the best female country vocalist of all time. Be a be a real uh, knockout round between her and Loretta Lynn for that title, though. All right, so what else we got here? We're going back into some jazz for Gary. Uh, Thelonious Monk, right? Criss Cross, 1965, the release on this one. This is a quartet. Charlie Rice on tenor sax, Frankie Dunlop on drums, and John Orr on bass. Uh, he does hack and sack on here. That was done by a few people in the jazz world at the time. And um, Rhythm and Ning, that's a cool one too on here. There he is on the back having a dart. Maybe chilling out before he's getting down on the key on the keys again, right? All right. Thelonious Monk doing Thelonious Monk stuff. And then lastly, a little more jazz. Oh, my allergies today. Itchy nose. Um, Char Charles Mingus, uh, Changes 2. This one from 1975. Part 1 of this, I think, was 1971-72. Uh, legendary bass player, of course. I think this is a sextet. It's a quintet or a sextet, I'm pretty sure here. Uh, if you wanted to look up something on this one, uh, Black Bats and Poles is a cool one on here. Very, very just one, the, what they say, the best bass player ever in the jazz world. Um, yeah, he's just, he's, he's great, man. So anyway, it's Charles Mingus. I mean, great day, Anthony. You were like, go to Savers, Mike, and I did it, and I'm thrilled. So yeah, got some good stuff. So lastly here, what, was I, what else was I listening to this week? Oh, we got the playlist right here. And uh, yeah, I was looking for something else here. Oh yeah, here it is. On my shelf. This is gonna come in in a second. Bob Seeger and the Silver Bullet Band, 1976, doing the night moves, right? So there he is right there. Legendary hair, of which I'm so jealous. I just I'd like to show up at work, you know. Hey, but my hair grew back. Look, <laughs> Twilight Zone. So anyway, uh there's the band on the back. Uh I mean, rock and roll never forgets. Night moves the title track. Uh, Sunspot Baby is a really good one on here. Of course, the ballad Main Street, excellent. And uh, yeah, the fire down below. So when I was listening to this, I look up on my shelf there and I saw this. This is, I don't know, that was like Sunday or Monday. And I saw this. Yes, when one's not enough, it's a triple bill. It's a triple feature of Steven Seagal's best 90s work, right? And then fire down below, right? So oddly, I looked up the soundtrack for this, like Wikipedia or whatever. Song's not even on it, so I don't know, maybe they didn't like each other. Ah, you know, <laughs> Steven Seagal, he kicked him or something, I don't know. But uh, Seeker Song, not on that on that soundtrack. But anyway, it's a pretty funny movie. He, he goes up to, uh, he's in the Appalachians and he's in the FBI and there's some environmental uh, catastrophe gonna happen because Chris Christopherson of all people is this really bad guy. He's like a bad oil guy or something and he's gonna, he's gonna destroy everything. and. And Steven Seagal's here to save the day. And, and Levon Helm from the band, the drummer, he dipped his foot in the water of acting. And he's in this movie, too. He has a small part. There's Levon. And, uh, yeah, so what more needs to be said except the Academy Awards? Skip this one. They need to go back and revisit it, man. There's a fire down below. And then the other two, what do we got? He's out for justice. And then he was on Deadly Ground, right? I think I think on Deadly Ground, it was Michael Caine was the villain. It's like some of these legendary actors are like in the 90s, Oh, I'm, I'm in here for the paycheck, right? Great. There's a fire down below. I will leave a link to one of the best fight scenes in the movie. It's only like a four-minute scene. Because, of course, after I was playing that, I went on YouTube. It was a really funny scene where he's just... Because he's pretending to be a handyman, but he's a secret agent. And he's he's in this lumberyard. And then these guys, they know who he is. And you're an out-of-towner. You need to leave. And he does a number on these guys with a two-by-four. It's just... Is classic. So I'll leave a link to that in the description below, as well as leave lots of links. Links. Missing links. McBeard versus Food Guy. My friend Craig. Vinyl Sean. I'll leave links. That'll be a lot of links, but get down there. That's how you discover new things, people, right? So what else was I listening to this week? The great Joe Walsh, right? This is the his second album, the follow-up to Barnstorm, that debut. Really amazing record. Uh, I cannot recommend this enough. I, I might have shown this over the years before, but why wouldn't I? Because it's legendary. But the thing that annoys me with it, so here I am, you can see the title. 
And then if I flip the background, it's upside down. I don't know why they did this because people typically listen to this Joe Welsh album maybe having a puff or two and it's very confusing. And then you flip it and the gate folds the other way too. Make up your mind, right? So there's the band and there's Joe down in front. So yeah, this is again, one of those front to back every track. Of course, kicking off with the legendary Rocky Mountain Way. An overlooked one on this one is Midnight Moody's. So that's a really cool track. And uh, Days Gone By. Oh, all of it's good, right? Of course, Meadows too, one of my favorites. So yeah, Joe Walsh. All right. Then when one Joe Walsh isn't enough, there goes the neighborhood. That's what they're going to say around this street after I have my party in July. So uh, anyway, it's Joe Walsh. There goes the neighborhood. Things kicks this off. Life of Illusion was a pretty big track on this. Uh, but I mean, this is another one. It just, this is 81. So it's, <clears throat> he's entering that decade. And like, he really was on a roll in the 70s you know, post James Gang, and then he, he had his own solo thing, of course, in the Eagles, and he kept the solo thing going. But then into the 80s, I was starting, I started to lose interest, and I was into more new wave and, and alternative stuff. But I do remember these records, like when I was in middle school, and uh, this is a copy I picked up probably a couple of years ago, but really excellent album. Uh, there's Joe, you know, he's on duty on the tank. Looks like he's done enough damage, right? That must've been quite a party. Joe liked the party, and it's no secret. There he is there. It looks like the morning after. Like, where am I, right? <laughs> Who am I? Oh, I'm Joe Walsh. Oy, oy. All right. Hilarious, right? Okay, so I guess that's going to do it for a Friday Cheers. I don't know where Colton is. He was running around here raising hell earlier. I'll probably make another video this weekend, actually. So Colton will be back. Don't you worry. And um, yeah, so that's going to do it for a Friday Cheers. All right. Have a gants at my friends straight out of Rhode Island, like I say, right? Mm-mm-mm. All right, happy Friday, people, and I'll see you next time.